bright duty every student matters let's move ahead and talk about the functions of nervous system right so nervous system has three main functions first of all the sensory input integration of data and motor output now understanding these three points is very important uh our environment whatever we have around us how do we perceive it right how do we understand what is happening let's say for example a ball is thrown at you right so how do you know that you need to dodge the ball or you need to catch it right how do you know that suppose uh you know a person who is let's say a uh, huge in size let's say a uh, a very uh, you know strong person throws the ball at you with a very high speed right well, usually if you are a athletic person you might think of catching it but sometimes you might get afraid and you might want to dodge it so how do you know that you you how do you make that decision so this decision is in may is made in split seconds in your brain right so first is the sensory input so sensory input in this case are your eyes right so your one thing first thing which happens is that you are seeing the ball coming towards you you are seeing the who the person is throwing you are seeing the trajectory of the ball so so many things are there which is going on and you are seeing so much right so when we are saying data so there is a lot of data coming so for example it's not only the ball coming towards you who is throwing the ball from what distance the ball is coming whether it is coming directly onto your face right uh, what kind of speed the ball is what is the size of the ball so this is a large amount of data which is being perceived by your eyes in a very small amount of time right this data immediately goes to goes to your brain now over here what happens is the integration of data so all of these things that is what is the speed who is throwing it what size is the ball and all of these things are integrated within your brain that means your brain processes all these information and comes out with a decision right and this decision in then go it then it goes to the motor output now motor output is basically what is happening what is the answer to that question right so whatever data the brain has processed it has come up with a solution that okay the solution is that i want to catch that ball let's say a football is coming towards me so the answer to the question is that i need to catch that football so what is going to happen that the the brain is going to instruct my arms to catch that ball so the first reaction which will happen is that immediately i will put my hands like this and i will try to catch the ball so three things which are happening over here is the sensory input which is being taken in by the sense organs for example let's say uh, during uh, the month of let's say june right it's very hot so you feel hot and what do you want you want to switch on the ac right so this is again a decision this is sensory input is coming from your body that it is very hot the brain is processing that how can we solve this problem and the brain comes up that okay i have a solution i'll switch on the ac so for us it will it is hardly a second where we you know feel hot and we start, want to switch out, uh, switch off uh, switch on the ac so this is something which is happening at a very high speed but all of these three are the most important ways in which our body functions right so all these three steps are included and are the function one of the major functions uh, or rather the only important function of the nervous system the nervous system is composed of excitable nerve cells that is the neurons and synapses right so nervous system have uh, you know excitable nerve cells are the ones which are going to convey information from one part to the other basically the sensory input the nerve is taking the input the you know the neuron that is the nerve is taking the information to the brain the brain with the help of these neurons is processing the information and is sending back the information through the neurons itself right so neurons are the uh, you know basic unit structural and functional unit of the nervous system and synapse what is a synapse it is the uh, suppose this is the neuron so right this is where one of the neurons has ended and over here the second neuron has started right you will see the uh, this is the part which we call as synapse right so where the two neurons come together 
right from one neuron the uh, information is going to the other neuron and where they meet the two neurons that place is called as the uh, that place is called as the synapse right now the sensory input is taken to the brain or it is received by neurons by glia and synapses so all these three play an important role to receive the sensory inputs right so what is glia over here glia is basically the cells that are found within the tissues and these are not excitable that means they do not have uh, the ability to transfer information right like neurons do but they help in myelination right now uh, what is myelination the neuron basically has a myelin sheet over it right so let's say this is the body of the neuron so over here it has it has myelin sheet right this myelin sheet helps in the jumping of the <coughs> nerve impulse right so this myelin sheet is produced by the glia cells and this jumping of the nerve impulse actually helps in fast transmission of information from one neuron to the other right so myelination happens because of this then apart from that it also has a function in ionic regulation and it also has the regulation of extra cellular fluid right now so myelination and then ionic regulation ionic regulation is now whenever uh, how does this uh, impulse is conducted is because of the ions that are present uh, in the uh, you know parts of uh, in the uh, neuron right and this balance has to be maintained so that the conduction of impulse takes place so glia cell has important function over there so although it is not excitable although it does not generate impulse but it is very important in the carrying forward of the impulse right now the neurons operate on excitation or inhibition right and although nerve cells can vary in size and location their communication with one another determine their functions so how is you know how can we say that this is uh, you know there are basically uh, two important types or rather three important types of neurons we have a sensory neuron we have motor neuron and we have relay neuron now this sensory motor and relay neurons are classified into these three because of their function sensory neurons are the ones which receive information from the sense organs and they transmit it to the relay neuron then relay or rather <coughs> they send it to the uh, relay neuron and the relay neuron send it to the brain right and from the brain when the information is processed it goes back to the relay neuron and then it goes back to the motor neuron so basically the function is very important over here that how uh, you know it is happening within the body and that's how we classify the brain now if you look at this example how this happens is that so how this happens is let's say that the eyes have seen something so this is what this is all the sensory information that is being processing processing right so eyes have seen something they have perceived something so this is what this is a sense organ then this information goes to the neuron this neuron uh, then transfers it to the spinal cord or the brain right so depending on what is uh, you know the information that needs to be processed the brain then processes it right it is important the information goes to brain also even if you know it is a split second decision which happens through spinal cord but still the information goes to brain because uh, you know that's how you learn right uh, how does a child a small child if you throw a ball at a small uh, you know towards a small child he uh, let's say a 6 month old child or let's say a 1 year old child or a, uh, you know 10 month old child who is walking but he will not know that he needs to catch the ball if you throw towards him he will learn right when he sees you catching the ball he will learn right so this information is processed and is memorized is you know processed into memory into the brain right and that's why the information whatever is happening in the body needs to go to the brain so that it can be uh, you know processed and it can be transferred into a memory and can be stored which is further uh, utilized in the uh, you know coming time 
So then again, brain or the spinal cord will will process the information. They will send the information towards the neuron, and the neuron will then send it to the muscle or a gland, depending on what response is needed. Right. So this is what is happening is the motor output. Right. So once the information is processed, the output is what we call as the motor output, and this is information is relayed to the muscle or the gland by a motor neuron. So over here you can see that the function is actually dictating that what kind of uh, neuron uh, is present in our body. Now let's look at how the uh, you know different parts of the central nervous system. The central nervous system is composed mainly of two parts. First is the CNS, that is the central nervous system, right, which includes brain and spinal cord, right. So this is the CNS which contains the brain, right, and the spinal cord. So this over here is the spinal cord, right. Then you have the PNS, that is the peripheral nervous system. it consists of two parts which is the ganglion and the nerve right so there are two uh, different uh, parts of a nervous system first is the cns and other is the pns we are going to talk about both of these parts now let's first talk about the cns that is the central nervous system right so central nervous system includes brain and spinal cord right the brain is the body's control center so this is the main part of the body uh it contro controls all the bodily functions it controls uh different it has centers for different types of things it also controls the way we react the way our hands move the way our you know legs move so it is the most important part of the body and it is that is why aptly named as the control center The CNS has various centers located within it, right? So within the brain, there are different centers. Like I said, there is a center for respiration. There is a center for what kind of smells that it, you know to understand the smell. The center for taste, right? So uh, the center for heartbeat. So different things are associated over here. Within it, that carry out sensory, motor. And integration of data. Now, over uh, when we were talking about the functions of the brain, we said that there were three main functions. First was the sensory, second was the integration of data, and third was the motor. So, all of these three functions are, uh, you know, happening within the brain at the different centers allocated within the brain. Right? These centers can be subdivided into lower centers, which includes the spinal cord and the brain stem. Right? and the higher centers communicating with the brain via the effectors right so there are two centers lower centers which contain contains the brain stem and your spinal cord and then you have the brain and uh, the higher center is the brain which you know uh, talks how the brain is controlling the actions or of, of effectors so higher center is basically the functioning of the brain the lower center comes down to the spinal cord and the brain stem right so over here we have uh, at least uh, you know over in this slide we have established that the main part of the central nervous system is the brain right so let's first understand the functioning of the brain the structure of the brain now the very first thing over here is that the brain is inside a cranium the brain is a very soft delicate part which is lodged inside a cranium and what is a cranium basically it is a bone a bony box you know the skull that we have this part over here is the cranium within which we have the brain right so this bony part protects the brain from injury but apart from cranium there are different layers which are over the brain which are protecting the brain uh, these layers are there to you know avoid any kind of injury to the brain to you know uh, you know mitigate the pressure on the brain and various functions it, so the basic function of these uh, you know layers is many uh, you know is of protection and these layers are called as the meninges right so there uh, these meninges are basically three coverings right so what are these meninges let's understand that first of all we have the outermost dura mater now this over here students is what it is the skull or the cranium right this part is the brain right 
now so the outermost part is the dura mater now this is the outer tough membrane or a tough meninges so this is the dura mater then you have the middle a uh, thin web like arachnoid so you have thin web like structure which is the arachnoid it is as you can see very thin and then you have the pia mater and this is the innermost structure and it is innermost and it is highly vascular that means it has rich supply of blood right highly vascular means that it has lot of blood vessels in it now why is blood vessel important because we know that uh, you know that the blood vessel they carry oxygen it carries nutrient and our brain needs a lot of oxygen it needs a lot of nutrient because this as we have already said it is a very important part of the body and the proper functioning of the brain ensures the proper proper functioning of the body uh, how important uh, you know the brain is you can even imagine that if uh, during the starvation let's say there is a period of uh, starvation and a person eats three chapatis in the whole day out of those three chapatis the two chapatis the energy from the two chapati will actually go to the brain right so that's how important the functioning of brain is right so the pia mater is supplied with which you know it is it is having a rich supply of blood with the help of the numerous blood vessels and this actually helps in uh, you know oxygen transference in the transference of nutrients in the <clears throat> removal of any kind of you know toxic material or metabolic waste all of this is done with the help of these vessels and that's the reason why pia pia mater is the innermost meninges uh, innermost meninge uh, you know covering and is supply with blood vessels right now apart from that the spaces between these meninges right so uh, is uh, you know filled with a fluid called as csf that is the cerebro spinal fluid right it is called as the cerebro spinal fluid now uh, the brain that we have actually the brain the cranium uh, it, now brain uh, the weight of the brain is uh, near about 1.5 to 2 kg right now but do you feel that weight on your head the reason is that this csf which is present you do not feel the weight on your head the reason is that the csf which is there it provides a certain buoyancy to the brain it protects the brain from any kind of infection right it also is present between the <laughs> between the uh, meninges it is also present in any sinuses which are present in the cranium so basically the brain is completely covered by csf uh, csf or either by uh, you know it is completely uh, covered with two things first is the csf and other is the meninges right so uh, the you can imagine what kind of protection the brain has right uh, these uh, csf and the meninges it protects the brain from any kind of injury protects the brain from any kind of pressure right so any kind of shock csf also acts as a shock absorber right so all of these things are important to maintain a good health and safety of the brain right now moving ahead this is the diagram of the brain that is present how does it look within the cranium right so over here you can see that this is the skull that is the cranium this is the part of the brain called as cerebrum over here these are the different membranes or the meninges then you have cerebellum you have the spinal cord all of this we are going to study in detail but this is how a brain looks when it is inside the cranium now let's talk about the structure of the brain now the brain consists of three main regions we have the forebrain we have the midbrain and then we have the hindbrain now forebrain consists of cerebrum and diencephalon this is the cerebrum over here this is the largest part of the brain and has lots and lots of function we are going to talk about this in detail but <coughs> cerebrum and diencephalon are the parts of your forebrain then you have the midbrain this is a small tubular part between the forebrain and the hindbrain so this is the forebrain and the hindbrain and between that we have the midbrain then hind hindbrain consists of cerebellum 
it consists of pons and it consists of medulla oblongata so this also is an important part of the brain cerebellum is again a very crucial part because it has various centers it is important for the working of the brain the you know it is important for uh, you know walking of uh, you know it maintaining the uh, stature how a person walks right all of this is controlled with the help of cerebellum now one by one we are going to talk about the parts the very first part which is there is the cerebrum which is the part of what it is the part of the four brain right now this is the largest part of the brain which is divided into two parts the right and the left part which is called as the cerebral hemispheres right so this part over here which is highlighted in the red color over here this part is your cerebrum so you can see why it is called as largest part you can see that almost all the brain like uh, you know you can say that 70 80% of the brain is cerebrum only right the outer surface of the uh, you know cerebrum is highly convoluted with ridges and grooves right so this is as you can see uh, this is highly convoluted now this this convolutions these ridges and grooves actually help in providing a larger surface area why is it needed because when you will see the function of cerebrum one of the major functions of cerebrum is understanding uh, or gaining knowledge right so whatever you are learning right now whatever i am teaching you you are learning everything is being processed in a short term memory and from uh, and from the short term memory it will transfer into long term memory and it will be stored in your cerebrum uh, based on your knowledge the decisions you will take all of this is happening in the cerebrum so that's the reason why we say that cerebrum is very important and that is why it is highly convoluted because this these highly high convolutions the ridges and grooves gives large surface area and why large surface area is needed because this large surface area actually helps in processing lots and lots of information which is coming in right so this is very important right now again left side of the cerebrum controls the right part of the body and vice versa so this is something very uh, in, you know unique or this is something very interesting that we said that the brain was divided into two parts left part and the right part the left part of the brain actually controls the right part of the body and the right part of the brain controls the left part so let's say this is one part of the brain the cerebr cerebrum so this part will control the <coughs> you know other part that is the left part will control the right part and the right part will control the left part so this is something very interesting to see right now let's talk about cerebrum in detail each hemisphere is hollow internally and the walls have two regions right so walls have two region the outer region of the cerebral cortex contains cell bodies of the nerve cells and being grayish in color it is called as gray matter now we know that if we talk about a nerve cell right so if we talk about the the nerve cell so this looks this is a uh, you know a diagram of the nerve cell these are the axon endings right and this is your cell body right so this part over here is the cell body these are the axon endings right so the uh, cell body is present in the outer that is the cerebral cortex part of your uh, hemisphere uh, that is the cerebrum right so the each hemisphere both that is your left hemisphere as well as the right hemisphere have uh, you know uh, they are hollow internally and they have two regions first is the outer region and then is the other re uh, inner region the outer region which is called as the cerebral cortex contains cell bodies and so the cell the outer region contains the cell body right and this cell body being gray in color this when it comes together so it looks like a, a you know it gives a grayish tinge to the brain and it's called as the gray matter then the inner region is composed of whitish axon fibers so these are the axon this is ho this whole part is the axon right so this is uh, the inner part is uh, you know containing axon fibers and that's the reason why uh, you know because the 
axon fiber are whitish in color that's the reason why the inner region is called as the white matter corpus callosum is a sheet of criss cross nerve fibers connecting the two cerebral hemisphere right so both these hemi uh, hemispheres are connected to each other with the help of corpus callosum which are what these are your nerve fibers which are present in a bundle you know and these connect both the hemispheres because it is important to transfer the information from one hemisphere to another so that's the reason why they are both connected by a bundle of nerve fibers called as the corpus uh, corpus callosum right now let's talk about the main functions of cerebral cortex so there are three important functions of cerebral cortex first of all it controls and initiates voluntary muscle contraction so voluntary muscle contractions mean means which are under our control that means that i want to pick up this pen so this is something which is under my control so that's the reason why it is called as voluntary that means i want to do it this is something which uh, i have thought about and made a decision and i'm trying to do it that is picking up the pen so this cerebral cortex controls the voluntary muscles contraction so for picking up my pen i need to uh, you know uh, uh, you know make my hand like this into a grip and then i'm going to hold it so all of this involves a lot of muscle contraction and relaxation and this is caused with the help of the cerebral cortex then it receives and processes information from the sense organs like eyes ear and nose now that's the reason why you see that how big is the cerebrum the reason is that it is it is receiving information now you can imagine every day we are looking and hearing and you know feel you know touching and smelling so many things right for example whenever you go home let's say you like a particular dish let's say you like biryani right as soon as you go in right you smell that dish as you as soon as you open the door you smell it right and you recognize that okay this is the dish that i really like right so what why uh, you know why are you able to recall it because your nose was in the very beginning it was able to remember that smell when you took in the smell the brain remembered that smell and it triggers your memory as soon as you smell it right so you can imagine from the childhood to the age let's say 18 19 or 16 so many 16 years of information and then further as you grow, grow uh, you know old older and older you get more and more information and all of that information is clubbed together and stored into your brain so you can imagine that for all this that's the reason why you see that first of all cerebrum is largest and it contains so many you know convulsions like your ridges and grooves to increase the surface area right it carries out mental activities of thinking reasoning planning and memorizing so all of these things right all of these uh, you know uh, uh, all the efforts that we put in to make a decision right we think we reason we plan and then we think of a memory which will help us in understanding that whether this decision is right or not all of this goes or uh, all of this is done in the cerebrum so whatever thinking you are doing whatever mental cognitive ability that you have is present in the cerebrum right whatever uh, whatever i'm explaining you right now whatever i'm teaching all of that is going and it will be stored in the cerebrum right so memorizing part again and again when you learn something all of that will go and it will be stored in the cerebrum right it will be stored in the cerebral cortex for you to remember and memorize that right so you see that how important cerebrum is and what are the important functions it conducts within our body so this was all about cerebrum and the different functions it does now let's move on and talk about another important part of the brain that is the diencephalon right now this whole part over here right this part is the diencephalon right this is the part of the brain part of the forebrain lying below 
the cerebrum so in the diagram itself it is quite clear that this is this part is the cerebrum and below this part is the diencephalon right now diencephalon further has two parts that is the thalamus and the hypothalamus right so once we have seen that what are uh, what is the structure of the brain and where exactly is the diencephalon now let's talk about the function of both of these parts that is the thalamus and the a hypothalamus right so thalamus basically what is it it is an egg shaped mass of gray matter now i am pretty sure by now you must know that what is gray matter gray matter is the part where the cell bodies of the neurons lie right so it is the egg shaped mass of gray matter it is located in the center below the cerebrum right so let's go back to the diagram and look at it so this is the egg shaped thalamus that we are talking about and you can see that it is present in the center and it is below the cerebrum it is it is the relay center for the sensory impulse for example the pain and pleasure going to the cerebrum now relay center what do we mean by relay center so this term over here means that whatever information is going to the cerebrum it has to pass through thalamus suppose this is the hand and suppose somebody is pinching me now even if when i am doing this i am feeling a little bit of pain right so this sensor this sense of pain which is there from my hand it is going towards my brain through the thalamus so the sense whatever sense that you are getting whatever sensory information you are getting passes through the thalamus and then it goes to the cerebrum right how hard is someone uh, for example let's say whenever a mosquito uh, bites you right whenever it pierces your skin you feel uh, you know a little ting you know you feel that it is itching or you feel it right that is uh, the information that you get from the sense uh, sense organ that is your skin and that sense organ se sends the information through the thalamus to your cerebrum over there the process is uh, you know the information is processed and whatever action further is uh, need to be taken is done so what is thalamus it is the relay center through which any information passes right so all the information goes from the sense organ to the thalamus obviously it is present within the brain only so it goes to the thalamus and then it goes to the cerebrum then the second part is the hypothalamus right this is the second part this is a region of the brain located below thalamus again let's go back to the diagram and look at the structure so this is the thalamus and below it is the hypothalamus right the green part is the hypo, the green part over here is the hypothalamus it controls motivated behavior such as eating drinking and sex now motivated behavior is uh, something uh, let's say drink, why eating now eating is motivated behavior what do we mean that when you are hungry right or let's say you find something which is very tasty right and uh, let's say uh, after eating a full meal you have had a full meal and uh, somebody uh, presents you with a chocolate cake and you really like the chocolate cake so even though you feel full uh, you still can eat a piece or two right so this is something which is a motivation which is something which you really like so you can eat it right so this kind of uh, you know uh, instincts that you have the motivated behavior that you have is controlled by the hypothalamus now hypothalamus is also very important because it controls the secretions of pituitary gland now pituitary gland students is the master gland and uh, it controls all the hormonal functions of our body right all the other glands be it your pancreas be it ovaries testes adrenal thyroid thymus gland all the glands are controlled by the pituitary gland and pituitary gland in turn is controlled by the part of the brain we call as hypothalamus now if you look how where pituitary gland is located 
it is hanging below hypothalamus so it's a p shaped structure and you can see this is the pituitary gland which is uh, you know it is hanging below the hypothalamus right it also serves as the regulation center for the body temperature and body fluids so hypothalamus is also the uh, you know part where uh, which maintains the body temperature now we know that our body temperature is 36 uh, degree celsius it is the normal body temperature or uh, the temperature uh, in fahrenheit is 98 Uh, Fahrenheit, right? So that is maintained by the hypothalamus. If suppose you are having a fever, right? So uh, why fever is an indication of an infection in the body? So body needs to, let's say, a bacteria has entered the body. So body needs to raise the temperature uh, so that the bacteria dies or it doesn't function properly. So this control is with the, with the uh, hypothalamus that how it will increase the temperature of the body, right? Apart from that, it also controls the body fluids that uh, how much water needs to be removed and so on and. so forth right then the next important part of the brain is the cerebellum right this is the second uh, important part this is the cerebellum right uh, this whole part cere cerebrum and below it is the cerebellum it is a smaller region of the brain located at the base and under cerebrum so it is located somewhere over here right right below your cerebrum it has numerous furrows it also has a cortex of gray matter so numerous furrows right and cortex of gray matter this is the structure of cerebellum what is the function it has two main functions first is to maintain the balance of the body that means when you are walking right so when you are walking in a straight line your body has balance right so that balance is maintained by the cerebellum and it also con uh, con coordinate the muscular activities like running playing all of these things are controlled by the cerebellum now when we were talking about the effect of alcohol on our body so alcohol basically uh, largely it affects the cerebellum uh, the reason being that you must have seen a person who is inebriated that means a person who has con consumed a lot of a person who has consumed a lot of alcohol is not able to walk on a straight line right the reason being that alcohol is affected the center for movement and balance of the body and because of that the person is not able to move in a straight line and usually falls a lot right so that's why uh, we say that the alcohol is not good for the brain because it affects the cerebellum part of the brain then next part of the brain is important again it is the medulla oblongata so this part over here is the medulla oblongata it is the last part of the brain which is connected to the spinal cord now from here itself the spinal cord after the medulla oblongata starts the spinal cord so again this is further located further below the cerebellum and from here the spinal cord begins so it is somewhere at the base of your skull right what are the functions of medulla oblongata now it is again a very very important part of the brain it is the center for breathing coughing swallowing right all of these are your involuntary functions now this is something which is out of your control right so breathing is something which you do not control coughing swallowing all of these are not under your control and that is controlled by the medulla oblongata apart from that it also controls heartbeat the movement of elementary canal that is how the elementary canal moves that is the uh, you know how the food pro goes from your mouth to the esophagus and from the esophagus you know while you are chewing that is something that is voluntary which is happening on your on which is happening on your whims that means you are able to control how much you are chewing but once you swallow after that everything is under the control of medulla oblongata heartbeat again like i said it is the uh, center for involuntary function so heartbeat is again an involuntary function this is something which you cannot control so again that is uh, under the control of medulla oblongata and many many other involuntary functions in all 12 pairs of nerves that is the cranial nerves now there are two types of nerves cranial and spinal cranial nerves are the nerves which are originating in the brain spinal nerves are the ones which originate in the spinal cord 
So, 12 pairs of nerves that is the cranial nerves total 24 nerves come out of the brain. Some of these are sensory, some are motor and some are of the mixed type. So, these come out of the brain along with the medulla oblongata and they connect to the spinal cord. Right? So, you see that medulla oblongata not only func uh, functions as the center of involuntary functions, but it also is you can say a bridge or it is also a connecting link between the brain and the spinal cord. So, the medulla oblongata comes out from the brain and it continues. I mean, after that it connects with the spinal cord and then the whole function is coordinated with the help of that. So, you can see that how important these parts of the brain are and what are their functions. Now, once we have understood all of these parts, let us just look finally that where all these parts are actually located, right. So, you have the cerebral hemispheres over here, this, these are the cerebral hemispheres. Then you have thalamus, the hypothalamus, both of these are the parts of the diencephalon. Then you have the midbrain which connects the forebrain and the hindbrain. You have the pituitary gland which is uh, connected to the hypothalamus. Then you have pons, you have medulla, pons is again a center for respiration. You have medulla oblongata and then this is the cerebellum. So, these are the important parts of your uh, brain and these are the various locations where they are present, right. So, I hope you were able to understand the structure and function and the importance of brain. Thank you.